Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tushar Mehta. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and a national level faculty of orthopedics. Well, the heading of this video is probably now clear to all of you as you have seen the thumbnail and that's why you have clicked on this video and now you can see the heading analysis of a GT. GT is grand test. Before we talk about analysis of a grand test, we need to understand what is grand test composed of. Grand test is composed of MCQs that come from all 19 subjects in different proportions. So before I go further, we need to understand what is an MCQ. So please try to understand one thing today. A multiple choice question is an objective representation of a subjective condition, which has to be answered within a finite period of time of let's say 40 to 45 seconds. But that is possible only if you have that entire subjective condition as a part of your spinal reflexes. I will break it again. So when I break the statement again, please understand it's an objective representation of a subjective condition. So a subjective condition, which might be a clinical topic in one of the clinical subject, which might be a cycle of biochemistry, which might be a histopathological examination of pathology, which might be a mechanism of action of a drug in pharmacology, which might be a life cycle of a virus or a bacteria in microbiology. So please try to understand that subjective condition has to be answered in an objective representation in a def definite period of time, but that is possible if you have that entire subjective condition as a part of your spinal reflexes and how one can do that. So guys, uh, let us say for example, you have attempted a grand test. You got, let us say, 120 correct in all fairness. You got, let us say, 70 wrong and then 10 is probably what you left. Now, there are very high chances that these 10 MCQs that you have left, maybe you have no clue about them. Or you have no clue about the subjective condition which they are representing objectively. So, what does that mean? That means that you have a to-do list and in that to do list for next few hours you have to finish these one to ten topics subtopics etc 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 because you had no clue about it and that's why you kind of left it because you thought that even if you will try maybe that will be a guesswork but that won't be a calculated most likely a correct guesswork and that's why you left it so probably you did not know much about this so you need to explore this entire subjective condition and that is your first priority because if you know something and you're confused still it's okay but if you don't know anything about something that is not okay so this is the first thing which needs to be accomplished in the to-do list 70 questions are wrong, first reason, that uh, it's a silly mistake. What do you mean by silly mistake? You looked at the question, mm -hmm. you recalculated the entire subjective condition, mm -hmm. you made up your mind that answer is either B or C, it can't be A and D, and then you thought it is most likely B, but since you were so much confused, you marked C. And while you were watching the solution, you saw that how the hell can I say C because I remember I recalculated B, but oops, I marked C because C was also one of the choices that was going on my subconscious mind. So you made a kind of a silly mistake where you were almost clear towards the correct option, but still you marked the wrong one because of confusion. So silly mistake is nothing but an outcome of the confusion. It is not a confusion about the topic. So it should not be a part of your to-do list. It is not a confusion about the subject. It is just a confusion between two statements, between two options, between just one concept that whether it is A or whether it is B. There is no difference like A and Z. It is just A and B. So you have to reinforce. You have to reinforce the facts or the data or the correct answers so you have to work on the silly mistakes how you have to reinforce those facts again and again second reason why you got a question wrong i'll tell you <clears throat> you read a question you came to the conclusion it cannot be a it cannot be c it can be b it can be d the first gut feel the first intuition was b but then you rethought about it and when you rethought about it, you were like, I don't think I'm convinced with B because probably my guesswork is not working great. I'm not informed with my guesswork. I should mark the answer as D. What does that mean? That simply means that it is not a silly mistake, but it is a mistake that you have committed because you lost control over the question because of multiple thinkings. So when you will revisit the question again, again, again and again, there will be multiple thought processes 
because of these multiple thought processes you got that question wrong so how do we solve this problem you solve this problem by following the first gut the first voice that comes from your gut is usually the correct voice so if you will stop visiting that voice again and again you will not be confused so what to do is what to do is that you thought b it came out to be d because you rethought it again and again so again you will have to reinforce but that is not a strictly reinforcement that is a kind of mentioning those strong facts again and again so make sure that you mention that strong fact post it on a wall in front of your uh, study table or anywhere so that those strong facts which are there in you which you know b but rethinking made it d so make that strong fact a little more stronger by mentioning it somewhere that will probably give you an incentive or a stimuli in the times to come that you will keep watching it 120 which are correct are correct there is no point in revisiting their uh, answers and explanations or video explanations again and again that will be just a waste of time now one more thing i want to mention that when i say 70 wrong that does not mean that 70 is wrong that means 280 is wrong when i say 280 wrong because every question has got four options so you need to revisit all the options and see whether the examiner has got a potential to make an mcq out of one of those option see a question has four option and believe me what examiner are capable of they will just pick one option and probably they'll coin an mcq on that option mentioning three other options so these 70 questions i i tell everybody that revisit not 70 mcqs but 280 options and see what is the possibility of asking an mcq on the remaining options and therefore you try to develop a mindset of an examiner i'll tell you with this practice after a point of time you will come to a point where when you will see an mcq you will not just see an mcq you'll probably able to identify what is the mindset behind this mcq of an examiner and it is at that point of time that when i say toppers are made rankers are made so when they look at an mcq after so much amount of the practice when they look at this mcq on a computer screen they don't only identify the mcq but they see as i said the mindset behind that mcq and they have a slight smirk on their face and they you know they kind of talk to themselves that i know it is between b and c examiner want you to confuse me but don't worry it is b and they mark b and they move on and they secure a rank so what is the bottom line that we have learned that it is an art solving an mcq is an art which is to be learned which is to be acquired which is not a part of the nature it is a part of the nurture one can do it for sure to read is one thing remember is another thing revise is the third thing retain is the fourth thing but most important thing is reproduce those retained things on the day of examination so anybody who's stuck at 120 correct 70 wrong 10 left at this moment for the remaining period till your neat pg exam you still have a decent time you have to work on your strategy how to cut that particular throttle of 120 mcqs because most of you are stuck at that point and it is not improving any further so at this moment you are supposed to work on your wrong questions along with the options so that further mcqs whichever they are made from it you are able to crack it i wish you guys all the best do well study well work hard please do share uh, this video with all your exam going colleagues so that they also understand this and i hope it benefits you in the long run i wish you all the best do subscribe to the channel god bless